Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So the case that I have for you guys today is one that I do truly believe has the potential to be solved, but I just think there needs to be a lot more awareness and attention brought to this case. It's one of those cases where I do kind of lean one way, but I'm really looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts and theories after the video. But before we get into the video, I just wanted to go ahead and give a big shout out and a big thank you to my patrons, Ash, Adreen, Natalie, Caroline, Clementine, and Yoki. Your support truly means so much more than I could ever express. Thank you all so much for helping me keep this channel going and for believing me in every step as I make my way through this journey on this channel. Thank you all again so, so very much. Okay, so with all of that being said, let's get into the video. Today, we are going to be discussing the unsolved disappearance of Chance Engelbert. Chance Engelbert was only 25 years old when he went missing on July 6, 2019. He grew up on his family's ranch in Burdock, South Dakota. He had two younger brothers, Miles and Clay, who he absolutely adored. He was described as being a friendly and happy person. He was also described as being so caring about others. He was the type of person who would just get off of a night shift and be exhausted, but if someone reached out to him and asked for a favor, he would be right out and do it for them. Chance was a bareback rider, which is essentially horseback riding without a saddle or equipment. This takes a lot of skill, balance, and coordination since they don't really have any equipment to correct the movements of the horse. He had been doing this, participating in rodeos, since he was in eighth grade and he was pretty good at it. He earned himself a scholarship for bareback riding, which took him to Laramie Community College in Cheyenne, Wyoming. He graduated from this school, earning himself a degree in diesel mechanics and welding. In 2017, Chance met a woman named Bailey and the two hit it off and fell in love. By October of 2018, the two were married, and by May of 2019, their first son, Banks, was born. They were pretty young when they got married and had their first child, but according to Bailey, when she first found out that she was pregnant, they were both very shocked, but Chance was so very excited for his son, and in her words, he was stupid excited. After graduating, he was living in Moorcroft, Wyoming, working at a coal mine while Bailey worked her way through nursing school. It was always Chance's dream to move back home to South Dakota to work on the family's ranch, but he wasn't able to, so for the time being, he just stayed in Wyoming. The family loved participating in the demolition derby, and Chance was always spending time working on his car. In fact, he was so excited to even buy his baby a mini derby car. He was just overall a very good father who worked very hard and he absolutely loved his family. However, shortly before his disappearance, he, along with 600 other employees where he worked, lost their jobs as their company went bankrupt. So he ended up getting a new welding job at a propane company in Moorcroft. He was set to start working there the Monday after the 4th of July in 2019, and he was so very excited to start this new position. Now on Saturday, July 6th, 2019, Chance, Bailey, and their son Banks all went over to Gearing, Nebraska to visit with Bailey's family. They were all just hanging out, golfing, and getting some drinks together. However, that evening, there was apparently some argument that had broken out between Chance and some members of Bailey's family, and Chance actually got pretty heated. Some some harsh words were exchanged between them, so at around 7.30 p.m. that night, Chance started gathering his things and he told Bailey that he wanted to go home. So I guess the two then went over to Bailey's grandparents' home, but by the time they got there, he was still pretty upset, so he started walking away from the home. He started walking north on the 400 block of O Street. Now, this was a common thing that Chance did after an argument. He just sort of needed to walk away and calm down for a bit. According to Bailey, though, this time he just kept on walking until she couldn't see him, but she didn't go after him because she didn't think that it was very serious. She thought that it was just as he normally did, that he would be back soon. But once it had been a little bit and he walked away pretty far, she did start to walk in that direction, but she couldn't find him. Now, after he had left, he actually called a friend to let him know that he was upset and would need a ride. He said that he was walking towards Torrington, Wyoming. This is quite 
quite a far walk away from where he left at Bailey's grandparents' house, so it's kind of unknown whether he actually planned to walk all of that way or if he just planned to hitch a ride until he got there. However, this friend told him that he wasn't able to give him a ride because he had been drinking and he wasn't able to drive. So this friend went ahead and reached out to Chance's mother to tell her what happened and see if she could find him a ride. So Chance's mother tried reaching out to him and then she had an uncle reach out and other families reach out to him, but nobody was able to get a hold of him. They just thought that maybe he was upset and didn't really want to talk to any of his family members. Maybe the friend was the only one he really felt like talking to, so they didn't totally think much of this at first. The last time that anyone had heard from Chance was at around 8.46 p.m. that same day. Then at around 9.08 p.m., it seems like his phone had shut off because there were no more pings, no more messages, or calls to or from his phone. Then sometime after 9 p.m. that night, there was actually quite a severe thunderstorm that swept through the area. Bailey had been going around and looking for him a bit that night, but she had to stop because of the storm. At that point, Bailey had just assumed that Chance probably took shelter at a bar or some other nearby building. And at this point, Bailey still wasn't totally panicked. She thought that he would come home that night because again, this was something that happened pretty frequently where he would walk off and then just come back later that night. Chance's mom had also been in contact with Bailey to ask her what they should do, but it was pretty dark out and she said not to go and search for him because there wasn't really much else they could do. Plus, that storm was sweeping through and it was pretty bad, so they didn't think that they would get anywhere anyways. However, by the time 11 p.m. hit, Bailey was panicked, so Bailey went ahead and filed Chance as a missing person. Now, initially, Chance's disappearance was not suspicious of involving any sort of foul play. Like I said, a storm had swept through the area where Chance was last seen on that same night. It was a heavy thunderstorm, and it was cold, and it was lightning, and it was just overall all some very dangerous weather conditions. Police worried that maybe he got hypothermia or maybe he slipped into a river or a stream. So initially, they geared their searches towards that. They had hundreds of people out searching, including his family but they didn't find any sign of him anywhere. By July 11th, almost a week after Chance was last seen, his missing persons report turned into an investigation. Now, immediately, police reviewed surveillance video to see if they could figure out where Chance went after he left. They found surveillance video that showed him walking north on 10th Street in Gearing, then turn west onto Martha Road into Terrytown. He was last seen wearing a short sleeve button-up Wrangler shirt, dark blue Wrangler jeans, a Roper-style boots, and then a black and white trucker hat. In addition to the surveillance video, they found that his phone last pinged on a tower near Riverside Golf Course, which is around four miles away from Martha Road, where he was last seen walking. So after this, more than a dozen agencies from both Nebraska and Wyoming helped to search the area. They used sonar and boats to grid search the water. They got canine teams to grid search the land. They also got helicopters to search from above as well, but no matter how much effort they put into their searches, there was not a shred of evidence of chance found anywhere. Now, being that it was a pretty small area and small town, there were a lot of rumors and speculations that led place in certain directions, but anytime they followed up on any of these leads, they didn't really get them anywhere. In addition to this, there were even reported sightings of Chance in Oregon and Texas, but when they went and investigated these sightings, nothing really came of these either. So, after all of this, we're pretty much just left with the theories in this case. And there are many different theories that point in many different directions. The first theory is that Chance just left on his own accord and he's out there just living his life. We know that he walked away after an argument with Bailey's family. We know that this was a decently heated argument and he may have gotten very upset and just decided that it was time to leave. Even though everybody says that they had an amazing marriage, every couple has problems in the background that many people, even those closest to the couple, don't know about. We know that he was seen walking away on surveillance video and his phone even pinged four miles away from where he was last seen, so we know that he got decently far. Even Chance's own mother acknowledged that there is a small chance
hands that Chance left on his own. It's something that she wrestles with internally. She says that it would be a sense of relief if he did walk off on his own. Police even came out to directly speak to him to say that if he needed to decompress and that's why he walked away, it's not illegal. He had every right to go missing and there will be no criminal charges brought against him if he did decide to leave on his own. His mother said, quote, please call somebody. You don't have to come home. We just want to know that you're safe. Our heart aches every day every night. So there's definitely a thought out there that this is what happened. But those around Chance say that this would be so out of character for him. He had absolutely no reason to walk away. First, we know that he was just about to start a new job shortly before his disappearance. He was really excited for this job because he had been working as a coal miner for so long and now he was about to work as a welder, which was a really nice change in pace for him. He was a very hard and dedicated worker, so it was just really weird for him to leave if he was just about to start this new job that he worked really hard to get. In addition to that, we know that he had a very young baby boy who he absolutely adored. Even if he did have his problems with Bailey and her family, he was so excited to raise his son and it would have been a lot easier just to get a divorce from her and share custody of the baby. He had so many things to look forward to and according to Bailey, he showed absolutely no signs of not wanting to raise his baby boy. Plus, this is a relatively small area. It would have been really hard for him to get around without anybody seeing him. If he was even still living in the the area, he would have been seen by at least somebody. If he left the area and then did go to a different state, it would have been really hard for him to have figured out a way to get there without a single person seeing. Like, we can consider that maybe he set up something with a friend and then paid them and then they just haven't said anything, but as far as I know, none of his friends or family have been known to have any suspicious behaviors and there are no phone calls or text messages to show that he reached out to anybody and there was absolutely nothing on his bank accounts to show that he had any suspicious activity there. So just the logistics of this don't seem very likely, and then we have all of the other things to consider, and this theory just doesn't seem very likely. The next theory, which kind of goes along with this theory, is that he did walk off on his own, but then he was harmed while he was out there. And within this theory, I feel like Walking out on his own more so refers to him walking to cool off, and he wasn't really planning to be out that long. So within this theory, we have to consider two possible avenues. So the first idea, which is the one that I think is less likely, is that he was met with foul play while he was walking sometime during the storm. Maybe he did take shelter in a bar or a building. Maybe he went into an alley to take cover. Maybe somebody saw him and took it as an opportunity to rob him, and then things escalated and he was murdered. Then, of course, whoever did this to him got rid of his body. Or maybe someone saw him and just killed him as a victim of opportunity. However, with this avenue within the theory, I just don't think that this is the most likely. I just don't think that it's very likely that someone was just out there mugging or murdering people in the middle of a really bad thunderstorm, and then when it comes to him being a victim of opportunity, it is possible, but I think this is much more common in women. Unfortunately, I do think that women are a lot more likely to be killed as a victim of opportunity than a man is. Plus, it would have been extremely hard for this person to just dump a body if it truly was just a case of a robbery gone wrong. I don't think that these people usually go to the lengths of getting rid of a body that just increases their chances of getting caught tenfold. So usually in the cases of a mugging gone wrong, the body is usually just left where it happened. The other idea within this theory of him being harmed after he left is that maybe he really did succumb to the elements while he was out in that storm. Maybe he got hypothermia and died somewhere, but just hasn't been found. Now, I do sort of have an idea that I thought of myself, and it might seem a little bit out there, but just hear me out. There have been cases where someone will go and try to hide from the elements, especially if he was starting to feel the effects of hypothermia, maybe he went and hid in a trash bin or a dumpster. Maybe after he took
took cover in the dumpster or trash bin or whatever it was. Maybe he died of hypothermia then and then a trash truck came and took him and that is why he was never found. I know this may totally sound like a reach, but I do think that it can explain how absolutely no trace of him has been found. The other idea within this theory is that he really did just slip and fall into a body of water. We can see that there's a huge lake right off of the street that he was last seen on. It's definitely possible that he fell into that lake. Or if he did continue walking, the North Platte River is also on the route to get to the Riverside Golf Course. If he was heading that way, it's possible that he fell into the river. I do think that if this entire theory in general is true, I think it's more likely that he fell into the river rather than the lake. The reason that I think this is because they searched all of the waters with sonar. They seem to have done quite the exhaustive search on the water, and if he fell into the lake, which is a stagnant body of water, I feel like they may have found him, or at least the chances of them finding him would have been a lot higher. But if he fell into the river, which is a moving and rushing body of water, it's possible that he fell fell in and then was moved to a completely different location and that's why he hasn't been found. There is a road that crosses right over the water and there's also a walking pathway that goes right alongside the river. If he was truly headed in that direction and then somehow got stuck in the storm, maybe he just tried to walk back home and tough out the storm, but maybe as he was walking home, he fell into the river. Maybe he got to the river and was walking on that little walking path that's right next to the river to kind of clear his mind, not realizing that there was a storm coming, and then once the storm did come, he slipped and fell. And just knowing how bad the storm was, it definitely seems likely that the current could have been strong enough to move his body pretty far before police even searched the river. I do think that with all things considered, if we look at the evidence that we do know, I think that this is a very likely theory. I also do want to mention within this theory is an idea that I saw from Reddit from someone who says that they live in the area, which is that maybe Chance had hopped onto a railroad train and then somewhere fell off the train and then he died and that is why he was never found. The person on the Reddit thread said that the reason this may be possible is because he did have some experience working at a railroad in the past, so he would have known the ins and outs of the railroads and he would have known how to get on a train without really being seen. But since this is from a Reddit thread from someone just claiming to be from the area, obviously we don't know how accurate this is, but I did think that it was interesting, so I just wanted to throw it in there. The other theory seems to have stemmed from Facebook and the internet overall. So there is one theory that Bailey and or her family were the ones who harmed Chance. This theory basically is that there was this heated argument and then Chance left and then once he came back or maybe they went out and found him and that is when they harmed him. Maybe this argument really was a very bad argument. I mean, it hasn't really been released what this argument was even about, so it would make sense that if they didn't want us to know what this argument was even about, that it could have been much worse than what they're letting on. I even heard an interview with Bailey on a podcast, and she really didn't go far into what this argument was even about, so it seems like they're kind of keeping that from the public. It could have been about any number of things, but if it really was this bad, bad of an argument. It could have been so bad that it was something that the family just could not let go of. Maybe Chance walked off and threatened to leave for good. Maybe he threatened to take the baby away. Maybe he threatened to leave the family. Whatever reason it could have been, some people have speculated that they're the ones that harmed him because of this argument. The first thing that we have to consider is that pretty much all of the information that we have comes directly from Bailey and her family. People have also said that Bailey's attitude right after the disappearance was far too calm. She told his family not to go out and search for him after he initially went missing. Additionally, only about a week after the disappearance, Bailey expressed that she thought that Chance was already dead and she requested a death certificate. This was incredibly strange because he's still technically missing. He is not confirmed dead, so it's just weird that that is what she has jumped to. Then, the family hired an attorney pretty quickly. 
Why would the family need an attorney if they had absolutely nothing to do with the disappearance? Then, one of the weirdest things is that Bailey's friend had actually gotten a new concrete walkway at her house right after Chance went missing. So, there are theories that she or her family killed him, and then with the help of this friend, they hid him under this concrete slab. Chance's family has also come out and said that their relationship isn't actually as good as people think. Bailey was very immature. She got mad at things that she shouldn't have gotten mad at, and she just didn't have the best attitude overall. So, some people think that maybe this altercation was so bad that she harmed Chance at some point after he walked off and maybe came back. However, on the other hand, there are a lot of other things that we have to consider. First of all, Bailey is only 20 years old. She is now a single mother just doing whatever she can to get herself through nursing school. Why would she bring that upon herself? She is now the sole caretaker of banks and she's also in school, so doing both of those things as a single mother is very, very hard. Plus, even asking for a death certificate right away can be explained away. Maybe this is just her way of trying to find closure. Maybe she needs a life insurance policy so that she can support herself and her child. That could be turned around and seen as a motive, but it's not guaranteed that she's gonna get a life insurance policy on him. And to me, as far as I've seen, it seemed like he was the sole breadwinner bringing in the money for the family while she was getting through school. So for now, she's not getting any income from Chance's salary, so she needs some sort of way to support herself and her child. I just don't think that it's very smart to get rid of someone and then just cut off the cash flow of supporting your child and your family. Plus, her family getting an attorney can also be explained away as not being super suspicious. When someone goes missing, especially someone that close to you, it seems like pretty standard practice to just get a lawyer and keep your family safe from all of these legal issues. Plenty of people get caught up in trouble that they weren't even involved with because they don't know how to answer police questions or they just didn't act the way that they were supposed to after something happened or, you know, rumors get spread around the town. I really do think that these rumors can be very very, very vicious, and so she probably needed a lawyer to keep all that in check and make sure that they didn't get any repercussions from these rumors that were going around. Then, of course, it could just be a coincidence that this friend built a walkway at her house after Chance went missing. I personally would like to see if this was a scheduled thing that maybe they had scheduled before Chance even went missing, or if this really was this last-minute idea that happened right after he went missing. That could definitely tell us a lot about this whole concrete walkway thing and if it's suspicious. I also want to mention that if it was at Bailey's parents' house or at her grandparents' house or even at their home, I would consider it a lot more suspicious than it being at a friend's house. Then, finally, we have to consider that she was able to kill her husband who was larger than her and then get rid of his body and have absolutely no evidence pretty much all by herself. It is possible that her family helped her, but that's still a lot of work and a lot of people to keep quiet and a lot of people involved in this. I just don't know. I think that this could be possible, but I don't think that it's the most likely theory given what we know. I do think that there are a lot of very suspicious circumstances with this, but I do think that pretty much everything that's suspicious can be explained away in a pretty reasonable way. To me, I think the most likely theory is that he walked off and then was somehow harmed along the way. I do think that this was some sort of accident and it happened so far away that police just have not found him yet. But who knows? He could still be out there somewhere. He could be buried somewhere. I do think that this case has the potential to be solved and I hope that it is because he has a baby boy that's sitting at home waiting for him. Chance Engelbert was last seen on Saturday, July 6th at 7 p.m. in Gearing, Nebraska. He's 5 feet 10 inches tall, 195 pounds, with light brown hair and hazel eyes. He has a scar on his hip. On the day that he disappeared, he was wearing short-sleeved Wrangler shirt, Wrangler jeans, roper boots, and a black and white trucker cap. If you have absolutely any information regarding Chance's case, please contact the Gearing Police Department at 308-436-5089 or Crime Stoppers at 
stop. So that is all I have for today's case and now I want to know what you guys think. Do you think he walked away on his own? Do you think he's still out there or do you think he was harmed? Or do you think that Bailey or her family had something to do with this? Please let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn on the notifications to be notified of any future videos. Don't forget to go ahead and follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and send them over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.